Playing arpeggios is the next step in your improvisation adventure. It will make you sound like a pro and create diversity in your improvisation and songwriting. Arpeggios can be very challenging to play, but in this video I'm going to show you the easy way. We're going to use a single shape as a concept to play all common 7th arpeggios. But let's start at the beginning. An arpeggio is nothing more than the notes of a chord played consecutively in a musical context. So that means when you play an arpeggio, you actually play a chord. Only not all the notes at the same time, because that would be strumming. And we leave that to shearing at. Let's take a look at the C major chord, which is derived from the C major scale. The C major chord consists of the root C, the third E and the fifth G. These notes, root, third, fifth, make up a triad chord, and in this case the C major chord. We could play the notes of that chord in order of appearance like this. Now we have created an arpeggio on the C major triad, but this is not what we're going to use. Besides the major triad, there are two more triads. The C minor triad, consisting of the tonic C, the minor third E flat and the fifth G. The C diminished triad, consisting of the tonic C, the minor third E flat and the diminished fifth G flat. Now, if we look at the conventional arpeggio shapes of these chords, we'll notice that it's not so easy to learn these arpeggios because they are all different in shape. So that's why we're going to reduce this arpeggio to one type of shape over just two strings, which we can then repeat in the next two octaves. Just watch this short video and it will all come to you. We'll take the major chord as an example. The triad arpeggio of the major chord looks like this. We can repeat this pattern, kind of copy and paste, over the neck in other octaves like so. C, E, G and C, E, G. And now we have a very simple pattern consisting of one shape and sounds like this in real life. We could do this also for the minor and the diminished chords. The basic minor arpeggio shape would be C, E flat, G. And next we'll repeat this over the neck in three different octaves. C, E flat, G and C, E flat, G. Again, we find ourselves playing such a nice and easy to remember pattern for this minor arpeggio. Last one is the diminished shape and look like this. We will repeat this shape over the neck and again we have a super easy pattern which can be copied and pasted in the next octaves. C, E flat, G flat and C, E flat, G flat. Still, triads are a bit boring, so stay tuned while we take the next step and start to party with 7 chords. There are 5 common 7 chords divided in 3 groups. 1 is the major chord group, 2 is the group of minor chords and 3 the diminished chords. There are also augmented chords, but they are outside the scope of this tutorial. The major chords look like this, a major 7th chord consists of a root, major 3rd, a 5th and a major 7th. So C major 7 would be C, E, G and B. A dominant 7th chord would be a root, major 3rd, 5th and minor 7th. So C7 would be C, E, G and B flat the minor 7th. The minor chord, the minor 7th chord, would be a root, minor 3rd, a 5th and a minor 7th. So C minor 7th would be C, E flat, G and B flat. And the diminished chords look like this. We have our half diminished chord or minor 7 flat 5 chord which consists of a root, minor 3rd, diminished 5th and minor 7th. So C minor 7 flat 5 would be 
C, E flat, G flat, and B flat. And then we have our full diminished chord. So C diminished 7 would be C, E flat, G flat, and B double flat. So, if we would to make arpeggios from these notes, we would end up with all kind of different arpeggio shapes. Surely we can use those shapes, but the logic is not easy to find in these arpeggio shapes. Although, you should learn them at one point of your, uh, well, your life. Time to simplify this arpeggio chaos into patterns that make sense and are easy to remember. Just like we did earlier with the triads. C major 7th chord, root, major 3rd, 5th and major 7th, looks like this when we play the notes over two strings. We start with the 7th and end with the 5th. We do exactly the same with the dominant 7th arpeggio for the C7 chord. The only difference now is that the B is lower to the B flat. For the minor 7th chord, we not only lower the 7th, but also the 3rd from major 3rd to minor 3rd. The half diminished chord has a flat 5 in addition to the minor 3rd and the minor 7th. The change is very subtle, like this. And last but not least, there's the full diminished chord which has, as we've seen already, a minor 3rd, a flat 5 and a double flat 7th. Just like we did with the triads, we can repeat these easy patterns over the neck into the next two octaves. So the major 7 arpeggio becomes The dominant 7 arpeggio becomes The C minor arpeggio becomes The half diminished or minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio becomes And the full diminished 7 arpeggio becomes So now we have a super easy pattern for playing those sophisticated 7th arpeggios. So playing arpeggios doesn't need to be that hard, if you use these formats. Although I advise you to learn more variations than these patterns only in order to gain some flexibility and diversity when playing solos that bear arpeggios. Well I hope this was crystal clear for you and I'll see you next time in a new QGEM Tracks guitar tutorial.